in this third part of the lecture, we will begin with the lion's griot and look at some music from Africa. Now, it is not possible to represent African music in a single chapter, as we've established, but it is possible to learn something about Africa through music. Music can serve as a corrective for dominant narratives about the continent. So as we go through, um, I will encourage you to press pause and then click on the audio clip links below this lecture video in the Blackboard module. They should all be there on the same page for you as this video. Now, getting to some terms, a griot, there's a proverb that says, history will glorify the hunter until the lion has his own griot. A griot is an oral historian or memory keeper, which also happens to be a musician. And uh, there are formal griots in African cultures, and just to generalize, and then there's uh, some that are less formalized. But we see in some cultures popular musical artists become, in a sense, griots. And two of those you see here, we have Mama Africa, uh, Miriam Makeba, and uh, Fela Kuti, who is also known as the Black President. Dominant groups will control what counts as truth until someone else's version breaks through, is the essential message of this proverb and musicians can provide this vision. So we're going to look at, like I said, these musicians here. So first let's learn about Mama Africa. Uh, Miriam Makeba was an extremely successful South African artist. She was the first African recording artist to win a Grammy. She is known for her songs Pata Pata and the Click Song. Uh, they were huge successes and she was most celebrated for her anti-apartheid activism. The apartheid regime in South Africa went from 1948 to 1994 and it institutionalized severe racism against black South Africans. So Makeba sang and popularized several political songs. One that we'll look at today is called Beware Ver Word. And the text is, look out Ver Word, the black man is going to get you. Look out Ver Word, the people have taken up the song. And this song was sung during confrontations with police. She performed many political songs, especially after the Sharpeville massacre in 1960. The police killed 69 protesters and injured many more. So after this, Makeba spoke out as a public figure against apartheid, and she performed increasingly political songs like Hugh Masakela's Soweto Blues. She participated in the civil rights and black power movements and contributed to pan-African liberation efforts. And through all of this, she earned the title Mama Africa. So please turn your attention to listening guide 8.2. Listen to this recording several times. The first time, just like with the other songs, familiarize yourself with the lyrics. And you can see the translation. The second time you listen, consider how the strong song structure, two alternating verses set to a repeating melody that is supported by a harmonic progression consisting of three chords is particularly well suited to being learned quickly and then sung by larger groups of people at, say, protests. And the third time through, think about how powerfully insistent the message of this song is. The economy of lyrical content and the compact musical form repeated again and again combine to drive the point home. Think also about how singing together in this way marks time, which memorial, memorializes and creates relation or bonds community and produces political courage and then mobilizes. 
So go ahead and hit pause and listen to Makeba's Beware Their Word. And then come back. Okay. Another musical example we're going to look at is by the artist Fela Kuti. He's a Nigerian musician, composer, and political activist. He pioneered a musical style called Afrobeat. This combines earlier styles of high life, juju, funk, and jazz. The music is characterized by complex interlocking rhythmic patterns, thick instrumentation with drums, other percussion, horns, guitar, keyboards, and vocals, particularly long tracks, and some of them he doesn't begin singing for at least five minutes, and extended intros with danceable grooves. You'll hear tightly orchestrated horn parts and long solos. Now, Fila Kuti's music is a political act. His complex polyrhythms are a defiant assertion of pre-colonial African heritage. The funk and jazz influences are a sonic tribute to the radical black thought he imbibed during his time in the United States. Lyrics are a diatribe against colonialism and its effects. In his lyrics are a critique of corrupt politicians and military leaders. He also wrote a song called Expensive Shit about a failed attempt to plant a joint on him and send him to prison for years. There is a link to that song in the extra stuff. If you go to course content, you can find folders that have all kinds of extra materials for each of these modules. So go check it out. Uh, The book also mentions other songs of his, uh, Water, No Get Enemy, and Zombie. Zombie is an invective against African leaders who mimic colonial violence. It also is about an incident in which 1,000 soldiers ransacked his compound, beat, assaulted, imprisoned him and his band members. They threw his ailing mother out of a window also, so it's a very awful experience. This tune became a rallying cry for activist youth, and there were riots in Nigeria and Ghana when Fela performed it. Fela was a contradictory figure. He established a commune and tried to secede from Nigeria, but also petitioned to run for president. He advocated for women's rights, but also married 27 women in a day. So here is the famed song, Zombie. This is Listening Guide 8.3. Listen to the first five minutes of the track. Here, Fela relies on the groove developed by his rhythm section to provide a vehicle for sax and trumpet solos and tight brass arrangements. At 5.20, Fela begins to sing, alternating in call and response style with his chorus. The lyrics are profoundly political and serve as an indictment of the behavior of those in power, including both politicians and the military. And throughout this masterpiece of Afrobeat, the band comes in and out to punctuate the power of the lyrics. So you can follow along with the rest of this listening guide by hitting pause and going to listen to it in Blackboard now, and then come back because we're not done. Okay, next we're gonna look at a music album by the musician Didier Awadi, which we've we've already learned a little bit about him. The album is called President d'Afrique from 2010. And what this album is, is reviving forgotten histories. And it's, it's another way that Didier Awadi, like these other musicians, were able to play the Lion's Griot. 17 African countries gained independence from colonial powers in 1960. This was a huge achievement, a culmination of decades of efforts from African leaders, intellectuals, and activists. But these stories are not frequently included in lessons about African history. 
Didier Awadi's 2010 album, President d'Afrique, or African Presidents, combats this trend by celebrating figures in recent African history. This section analyzes various dimensions of the album tracks in order to follow the imperative of using music as a way to understand key insights about the continent's past, present, and future. The album integrates various musical forces to political ends. As far as instruments, we have sabar drums on one piece. We also have the kora, which you can see here on the screen, on two other tracks. And there are pygmy, pygmy flutes on ensemble, which we'll listen to. There's seamless integration with digital beats and other genres. So we disrupt the false tradition versus popular binary. And it emphasizes the diversity of means by which African musicians communicate their message. As far as voices and genres, there are official tunes. Uh, we have Yande Kodusen, a Sere style singer and former official griot de Senegalese president, sings on one track. This evokes intricacy and power of griot traditions in many parts of the continent. And then there are several styles of hip hop from South Africa, Kenya, Mali, Senegal, Tanzania, Congo, Mozambique, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. This album shows how diverse styles of African music interact. It undercuts the illusion of distinction between pristine Africa and urban Africa, and the tracks communicate in a complex Africa. As far as melodies, harmonies, and rhythms, we will see in the next um, listening guide, we're gonna listen to the track Ensemble to learn more about that. So this piece, Ensemble, draws on the Independence Cha-Cha by Joseph Cabasele and introduces the voice of Patrice Lumumba, who was Congo's first prime minister. He was one of the most powerful anti-colonial leaders in Africa. He was murdered and his body dissolved in acid as a warning to African leaders trying to assert control over their own resources. The CIA still denies responsibility, but there is proof they coordinated with Belgium to kill him. Mobutu Sese Seko was put into power after he was murdered, and this dictator, um, dicta dictatorial regime excuse me, was supported by the United States, Belgium, and other nations, and they still exploit the Congo's resources. Congo's ongoing economic wars have resulted in more than 8 million deaths and it is still represented to outsiders as an ethnic or civil conflict rather than an economic conflict. So here is Ensemble by Didier Awadi. This is from the album President d'Afrique. And go ahead and go to Listening Guide 8.4 and read along and listen. You're gonna hear this tells the story of Patrice Lumumba and, and uses his words in here. And uh, some things to notice, we're gonna hear the guitar playing a sabene, which is the celebratory dance section of a Congolese rumba. And this ry rhythm, which Awadi echoes in his rap, infuses a kind of aspirational optimism into the song and underscores Awadi and Legal's commitment to honoring Lumumba's legacy. Okay, so hit pause and listen and then come back. Okay, some more from President d'Afrique. Remember this, there are 21 tracks on this album. And this one, we get into storytelling, which is another way to play the Lion's Griot here. On the track La Patrie ou l'Amour, 
it, we fe hear Burkinabe rapper and activist Smokey celebrating Thomas Sankara, who is the father of Burkina Faso. Sankara led a coup and took control of, over the upper Volta region. He replaced the name with Burkina Faso, which means land of incorruptible or upright, honorable people. Sankara fought for economic autonomy. He redistributed land and compensated farmers and made Burkina Faso food sufficient within three years. He expunged corruption, improved social welfare and environmental conditions without any foreign aid or financing, advocated for women's rights, and galvanized African nations against the repayment of odious debt. Three months after Sankara gave a speech to the African Union on Foreign Debt in July 1987, he was assassinated. Blaise Compaoré was put into power, reversed his economic policies with the help from the IMF, France, and the United States. Awadi and Smokey Song provides an example of the aesthetic of revolutionary hip hop from the time the album was produced. You will hear driving bass lines, aggressive beats, ominous vamps, distorted electronic instruments, and confrontational lyrics. This style of hip hop increasingly intersects with politics. In Senegal, rappers and journalists swung an election in 2012, and Smokey played a vocal role in a 2014 uprising that ousted Compaoré. So you can hit pause on this and go listen to this track. There's a link to the entire album. Just find this track on there and check it out. Lastly, the 21 tracks of this album reinforce the point that Africa is impoverished, not poor. <laughs> 